Hello, I'm Clementine, and I'm super sad. Never mind that. You're watching Heavy Metal ATC, and this is a 1967 General Electric Portify. This is the kind of gear your grandpappy would have used to serenade the dames in the bedroom or listen to the ball game on the stoop during the barbecue. But that's not why we're here. We're here because it's loud as heck and it has tubes in it. And I figured that with some head scratching, a couple cuss words, and some minor electrocution, it might make a rockin' Fender 65 Deluxe or AC30 type amp. Oh well, nothing. WTF? I've been swindled by gypsies. Park your clementines. Nope, I took this out already as I'm going to use the box for my preamp and gain circuit. Maybe reverb, even tremolo. Well, we have some tubes here. This thing works good. If you need it, you should contact me with a price I can't refuse and it'll be yours. As you can see, there's no antenna in here and it's wireless. So let's go to an animation of how that works. Okay, Timmy, let's learn about wireless communication. Well, we know the little box is sending a signal to the big box, and it is receiving it. To show this, we must knock a hole in the sheetrock. You can now see the main yellow wires running through the house. These carry the AC current seen in blue. When an input signal, in this case music from a Walkman, seen in purple, is sent into the transmitter, it is converted into a low-band FM signal, seen in red, and it is received by the amp and is converted back into music. But this introduces a lot of static and hum. So, that means that we need to install an input directly to the internal amplifier as seen here. To do that, we must remove the back of the cabinet. There's two hefty transformers and plenty of tubes and shiny giblets in here. You'll want to place the wires as seen in the following schematic. If you place your attention on the upper left hand corner of the circuit board, you will see that tucked neatly under this RF shield is a positive and negative wire. The negative is on a ground, which is connected to the chassis screw by a ground plane. The positive wire is connected to a trace, common to the furthest left terminal on the volume knob. The wires are neatly twisted together as to reduce hum. They run through a double terminal clip sourced from a television, so that the rear panel of the cabinet may be completely removed and then on to be securely soldered to the input. Alright y'all, anytime you fixin' to pyre up something you done modified, you need to be careful. Well, I went ahead and turned this thing on here, and there wasn't no smoke getting let out, no fires. I don't hear nothing at all, which ain't too concerning, so I pick this here thing up. Didn't make me piss down my pants breeches, or stand my hair up, or knock me black or nothing. So I touch upon the end of it, I didn't knock the hell out of me neither, and I got a good sound there. That means one thing. Okay, so that was amplification, but it didn't sound like a $1,200 boutique amp, so it's time to fill this box up with all kinds of little doobly-doos, like this gain circuit down here. It's a Fender 65 Reverb type of hot gain circuit. Moose Piss Deluxe. As well as this hot rod tone stack based on a 65 Fender Princeton I call the Flaming Quarter Paddle. Okay, so I suggest you like and subscribe because in the next video I'm going to show you how to use $5 worth of discrete components to make a Hot Rod 65 Fender Deluxe gain circuit and tone stack to make any old tube amp sound like a $1,200 Boutique 65 Fender Deluxe custom like this.